Good evening. Welcome to tonight's work at home story. And just as you're coming in, we'd love to hear where you're tuning in from. Um, and so tonight, sneak peek story is brought to you by your freedom project. And just as before we get running, just so you have a little bit of background, you know, 11 years ago, I was on the path to becoming a lifetime server. And with no post secondary education, it was very clear that if I wanted to make any progress, I needed to make a change. And that's when I came across your freedom project, which taught me how to become an online entrepreneur. And having my own online business has allowed me the flexibility to work from home when I choose to. And it's been a big help for my family financially. And I just realized I didn't even introduce myself. So I'm Kristen. Thank you all for being here. And so once a month, what we do is we take a work at home story, which is a day in the life of an online entrepreneur, just like me. And what you may not realize is that all of us are facing seven major challenges, which is making it more and more difficult for you and and those you care about to get ahead and truly thrive. And those include a changing economy, inflation, slow wage growth, income insecurity, massive debt load, soaring healthcare costs, and lack of retirement benefits. And although these challenges may seem quite daunting, thankfully, there are four powerful ways to ensure that you can overcome them through education, leverage, passive income, and entrepreneurship. And entrepreneurship gives people and families from all walks of life new possibilities for getting ahead. And it's a powerful strategy for dealing with the seven major challenges that we're all facing. So one of the reasons that we're doing these work at home stories is that we're on a mission to democratize entrepreneurship and help 10 million people become entrepreneurs and get the power of choice in their lives. So for tonight's work at home story, our guest is Mary Steen. And Mary has been able to experience the benefits of having her own online business for over 30 years now. And tonight, she's going to share a little bit about how she discovered her business, some of the benefits that she's enjoying, what a typical day in the life working her business looks like, and why she recommends others consider uh, starting their own business. So if you're at all curious about how you can experience the benefits of earning an income online, you're going to love tonight's sneak peek. So Mary, welcome and thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. I am so excited to share with others that are looking at do, working from home. Many people are being forced to work from home today, but they're still working for other people and not working for themselves. So I'm excited to share a little bit of my story and my journey because it has been over 30 years. 30 years ago, I was working with uh, my husband in an engineering firm and um, I was trading time for money. And still people today mainly are trading time for money. And I was missing out time raising our kids. And it wasn't something that we really wanted, but we needed the income. Um, during this time, my father, passed away in his mid 60s of heart disease. And my father in law, early 50s, um, died of cancer. And we wanted something different for our family, we wanted a different legacy. And um, I was buying some products from a company that uh, made a major difference in my sinus problems. And uh, they, the, the woman that introduced me, started a home-based business when her husband was laid off. They were brand new in um, our city and she needed to become the sole provider for her family with three children um, within weeks. And um, she started this business and I was one of her very first customers. And I saw that she made good income. She was driving a bonus car and she was going on trips. And I didn't know how, how she was doing it or, but I thought, ah, oh, maybe this is the question. Maybe we could have both. Maybe I could come home and be with my kids and raise my kids, our kids, I should say, um, and start building a business, a home-based business. And I wanted something that would be something that would make a difference in other people's lives. And I could see with my father dying early, my father-in-law dying early, I was having sinus problems. And what I learned was there are solutions out there and I could build a business around that. 
And so that was over 30 years ago. And um, they first gave us part-time income and then it gave us career income because wow. we got, I married my high school sweetheart. And um, so we had our children early and I knew I'd be in my mid forties when they were going off to college. And what, what will my life be like then? You know, do I still want to be working time for money? So I jumped in, even though I was scared to death, never had any background in sales and um, took me a long time before I could make my first call. Yeah. And, and actually would... <laughs> share a little bit about what you had to do, because Mary and I have already talked about this a little bit, um, but share a little bit about what you had to do to get yourself prepped for it. So I would put on um, sometimes a suit, really dressed up. I would put earrings, makeup, the whole thing to make a telephone call because I needed to feel professional. I didn't believe enough in myself, you know, the image that I wanted to project. And um, I would rehearse and I, honestly, it took me two months before I made my first call. And then once I started, in a rhythm and following a system, I um, um, became a, what we call in our, our business, a sales leader in four months, but wow. it took me two months to make my first call. <laughs> so it's about personal growth. It's about making a decision. See, I made a decision and it didn't matter. I had to figure it out no matter what it took. I had to figure it out and I had to have that personal growth to be able to step out of my comfort zone and know that I was the CEO mm -hmm. and I was the boss. And what would I say to myself if I was the boss of me? So yes, that's a, such a, a good, nice, it's a journey for yeah, sure. It's definitely a journey. And that's such a good point that you bring up about you had to really look at yourself from the boss perspective and say, you know, what would I say to myself if I was the boss of myself? And if I was the boss, bossing someone like me and having to manage me, what would I say? And that's, that's such a good reflection to look at that thing. So a question that I have is now, before you found this business, did you try any other ways to solve the challenge that you were facing before you found an effective solution? Or was this kind of the first thing that came into your life? Well, I had tried other jobs that were time for money. And I considered going back to school and starting um, a business. I st thought about buying, you know, starting a, a small um, shop, things like that, boutique. But my husband would always say to me, you can go back to school or we can invest in this. And that's not a guarantee that you will make the income that we are looking at. Plus, what that does is it takes you away from the kids. So it wasn't a fit. It wasn't a fit. So this, the woman that introduced me to my business that I do now, she was an inspiration to see that she was making, she was home with the kids and she could make a significant income. And she made a difference and she was making a difference in people's lives. She had a mission. She had a passion for what she was doing. And that made a, a big difference. And I think that's something that keeps people in the business. I um, shared with you, I had a conversation with um, a friend who had started up another business. And she said, and I said, well, how's that going? And she said, I quit. And I said, really? And she said, and here I look at you and you've done this for over 30 years. And I, I don't know what happened, you know, or why. And I said, you know, it's making the decision and knowing that you're going to hit a wall in this business. You're going to hit it where everything is like, I'm not sure this is worth it. You're getting no's. You can put all this time and effort and it, does, it doesn't work. And um, that is true in any business. You have a um, business that you have for a while and then you know, it, there's a transition and so forth. And you just work through the wall. You work through the personal growth. That's a huge thing of working on what your self-talk is, 
um, constantly going to um, things that help you to grow personally. You look at your habits, you learn to look at your, how you communicate um, with people. How are you building up relationships? This is growth. And the nice thing it was when I started this business, my children saw me grow in this way. And yes. they often laughed at me because we were, we had an unfinished basement and I would go down in the basement and then I would practice talking to myself. Mm -hmm. and her, their friends would come over and say, what's your mother doing? And they said, oh, she's just talking to herself. But I needed that. That was part of the personal development of what I was doing. And um, that's in some ways, that's the best part of this business. I would not have grown into the person that I am today without having this home-based business. I'm mm -hmm. grateful for the coaches that I had along the way, the friendships I've had all along the way, the mentors that come in and out of your life. It, it, I can't imagine my life without this business. That's incredible, Mary. And, and too, I mean, uh, for those of you who may have tuned in a couple of weeks ago, we had Elena Dennis on here. And she talked about shifting from the employee mindset to the entrepreneur life mindset. And Mary, I know that you and Eleanor are really good friends. Yes. So it was really cool to be able to touch base with both of you. Um, and so it's so nice to be able to hear that over and over again, that there is a shift. Because if someone's looking at this and wanting to take on a business like we do, there is a shift that needs to happen in yes. how you think Definitely. and the way that you think of how income comes in. So I want to just thank you so much for touching on that piece one more time. Um, and so when you look into the future for what you see for with your business, and then we're just going to touch, I'm going to get you to share a little bit about what a day in the life of Mary Seen looks like when she's mm -hmm. working. Um, but as you look into the future, what do you see your future to be now that you've built a stable business and, and how do you see it affecting the generations after you? Well, definitely. I, I, I love what I do. So I don't see myself like retiring or anything like that, it, it feeds into other people. And I feel like this is the time that I can give back. Mm -hmm. This is the time that the next generation that could be groomed and taught what I have learned over the last 30 years. And there is nothing, nothing more rewarding than helping someone else achieve their dreams, their goals, um, and seeing them experience things that I and my family have experienced over the years. And one of the things that really came home and warmed my heart so much because of this business, um, working from home, we were able to take our children, their spouses, and all of our grandchildren, which was 15 people, to Costa Rica. So what my company does is give trips. And trips changed our lives. It changed our culture and how we saw the world. It changed our relationships. So when I look at my future, it is more of that. But it's more of giving back because I got a bigger high by helping other people than I did even for myself, even though it, we tr truly enjoyed it. So it, this is just the beginning. C going from where I started the business to online, it's changed how we do business. And I'm actually loving it. Absolutely loving, you know, and working and, you know, I know people, it's hard homeschooling and, and so forth, but um, you can learn to do it. And, and you just have to shift priorities and shift habits and, and things like that. And uh, our business has thrived in the last six months. Absolutely thrived. I never saw any dip. In fact, March was the biggest month volume wise of sales in my 30 years. Wow, that's amazing. And so even through challenging times globally, you can build something that gives you that security and grows during times yes. of struggle and, and also offers hope to other people who may be going through huge transitions in life because maybe they've been laid off or furloughed or whatever it might be due to what's happening globally. And here is an option. 
Mm -hmm. um, and so I just want to thank you so much for for sharing that. And two, I'm every time you share the story about the trip to Costa Rica for your family that you guys <laughs> paid for, blows my mind because that is, too is one of those things that I would love to be able to do oh, for yeah. my family and just let's go on a trip on me. Uh, there's <laughs> there's some huge benefits to that. Uh, great. So Mary. What I'd like you to do is just share a little bit about what does a day in the life of Mary Steen look like as she's working her business and having a life at the same time? What does that look like for you? So one of the things you look at, first of all, I would say, look at your habits and what serves you and what does not. And you need, when you work at home, you have your home life, you have your family life, and you have the jobs that you need to maintain a home. Then you have a business. So what is important is that you figure out your uh, personal non-negotiables, meaning this needs to be done. I need to help my kids or whatever it is that needs to be done. And then you also have the non-negotiables for your business that need to be done. And it needs to be spoken to your family so that they understand and value that time also. So those two things are, I think, one of the most important things so that you know what has to be done in a day and it's not negotiable. And the things for your family, this what has to be done for my family and this is not negotiable. So that structures your day. You have a certain amount of freedom because you're working from home and you don't have a boss standing over you clocking in your time. But um, so... When you, when you do that, you may want to, you know, choose when am I the most productive for my business? And I found that I'm most productive in my morning versus my afternoon. So I tried to structure my business pretty much in the morning. And I know my non-negotiables are, I want five reach outs for the business. I want five reach outs for customer, for new customers, prospects. I want another five for follow-up. And then I am also, um, um, look, because when you're bringing people in, you get follow-up. And then I follow a system of guiding and helping people. And I structure it in with my time. And my husband knows that this is my productive time. So ideally, I like to get up first thing in the morning and do 10 gratitudes, write them down, Focus on my goals because you got to have goals to know where you're going and you have to focus on them because they go out the door really fast because the stuff happens and it really does. So, and I like to get exercise in and reading and things like that. But the, the power of having a home-based business is you get to control when you're productive and the, the, business and the personal and you make that fit into your life so i'm not a super structure like i have to do this at this time at this time mm -hmm. and this time but i have a flow and i try to stick with it and um, always look at what habits um that are good that serve my goals and my family and the habits that don't because they seem to try to creep in they so. sure do <laughs> They sure do. And I really like that you brought that up, that how you structure it based on when you know your most productive time is. And that's the beauty of this business is we can do that. We're not, like you said, we're not clocked in at a certain time and have to be productive at this time. If you're more productive in the afternoon, maybe you spend your morning doing the family right. stuff. But you brought up a good point is you have to make sure that you have those non-negotiables in there and then fit your life in that spot and yes. you know that's just such a great great point to cover so thank you so much mary now before we wrap up uh, before i do our little closing message mary is there anything you'd want to share with the folks who are maybe interested in looking at a business and kind of on the fence what would you say to those people well i i thought about it and i even wrote it down and um so i'm just going to look at it but give it time don't quit um, it does take time and sometimes it goes fast and sometimes it goes slow. Believe in yourself, grow yourself, invest in relationships and believe in others. Mm -hmm. That is excellent. Thank you so much, Mary. So, you know, I'm sure that there are probably a lot of people who can relate to your story. 
um, you know, who maybe are looking to transition out of working corporate and maybe have looked at other options. So if you're watching this and you feel like you're working hard, but you aren't making any headway, I just want you to know, first off, you're not alone. There are many people who are in that situation. And if you're concerned about any of the seven challenges that we're all facing that I mentioned earlier, and you're curious to learn more about how you can experience the benefits of becoming an online entrepreneur, I'd like to invite you to take a free, no risk tour in our business center. And to do that, just get in touch with the person who invited you to this event and into our community, where you can explore the opportunity to get ahead with an online business that you can run from your laptop and your smartphone. And in the tour, you're going to learn a little bit about the market that is experiencing phenomenal growth worldwide, the high quality consumable products our customers buy from us online daily, how you can create sales without having to be the salesperson, the 60 year old supplier that we've partnered with, the business model, our competitive advantage or secret sauce, the fabulous benefits like Mary mentioned, the, you know, expense paid travel, car bonuses, income, flexibility, security, so much more how you can do it in your spare time and how you can do it on a budget. And so I'd also like to invite you to join us next Monday where we are going to have our work at home show with a great friend of mine, Peggy Allen. And we're gonna talk about how you can earn on, during the holidays um, and still enjoy them at the same time. And so with that, I just wanna thank you again. Again, reach out to the person who invited you to this event if you would like to explore and take a look at a new possibility for getting ahead. And Mary, I just wanna thank you again so much for joining us tonight and for sharing your story with everybody. It is so valuable. Um, and so thank you so much. Thank you for asking. Awesome, take care everybody. Have a wonderful Monday. We'll see you here next week for our next Work at Home show. Awesome.